province of Saskatchewan has produced some amazing athletes over the years, and some of those athletes have gone beyond physical limitations to inspire and amaze in the world of sports. Today, we show you those who can and do excel. Welcome to another edition of Max Magazine. I'm your host, Brad Grass, and today we're at the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame for the grand opening of their brand new exhibit, Exceptionally Able. And what does that mean? Well, fortunately, we had the communications coordinator, Autumn McDowell, with us today. Hello, Autumn. Hello. Thanks for letting us be here today. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. Now, first of all, the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame, for viewers who've never been here before, what's it all about? This is where legends live. This is the mecca of legends of Saskatchewan sporting history. We represent 51 sports here at the Hall. There's 505 inductees. And this year is actually an extremely special year because it's our 50th anniversary. Wow. Yes. That's great. And some brand new exhibits, too. Yes. Including the one that we're in right now. This is the exceptional able to exhibit. What's this one all about? This is our brand new exhibit. It features all of our exceptionally abled inductees, so there's nine in total. You'll also see as you look around their sports specific displays. So we feature everything from wheelchair basketball, wheelchair tennis, para sports, blind sports, a little bit of everything. It, it's really inspiring when you walk through the entire exhibit, not just this one, but the entire Sports Hall of Fame, really, uh, filled with amazing Saskatchewan individuals, athletes, very inspiring stories. And our first story, has an inspiring individual as well. Check it out. Though assured of the gold medal, both ask the judges to raise the bar to 1.86 meters, six feet, one and a quarter inches. He's now attempting to jump one quarter inch above his own height. makes it on his final try to set a new world's record in the amputee high jump of 1.86 meters. I um, grew up for the most part on a farm outside of Olsler. When I was not quite three years old, I stepped into an auger and uh, lost my leg just above the knee. You know, I felt no, no kind of discrimination, but I was always allowed to do what I wanted to do. Like I could invent, invent different ways of, you know, playing hockey if I wanted to. If, of doing track and field events, and I found that I could do the, the high jump and the long jump, and this, I was actually pretty good at the sack race too, because two-legged people can't really hop very well. They usually trip over their other foot and stuff like that. So I'd heard about the wheelchair sports, right? So that had all started in, you know, in the late, late 1940s in, in England. And this doctor, Ludwig van Gutmann, had thought that it would be great for all of the World War II veterans to that their health would be better if they were actually moving around a bit, not just sitting still. But it was all wheelchair sports until 1976. They called it not the Paralympics, but the Olympiad for the Physically Disabled. And it was held in Canada, in Toronto. And that was the first time that all of the wheelchair and amputees, the blind, and those with cerebral palsy were competing, you know, against their own disabilities, right? So. You know, I'd competed quite a bit up to that point, at least in high school and, and in provincials and other kinds of things against able body. But at one point when I was a kid, I wondered what it would have been like to jump against equally abled people, right? And so that was an amazing year to meet all of these people from all over the world. And we became a little bit of a close-knit group of athletes from all over the place. And I mean, the, the level of understanding of what disabled people could do or how to get them to do things better or that kind of thing that grew over the years and it's still growing today but it's 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 just amazing how much science has uh, has helped and worked in that that regard Around 1994, I think it was, I'd injured myself in training and it was the first time I'd had a, uh, an injury uh, on my knee and I never jumped again after that. And then, I mean, I had young kids. Um, we moved to Moose Jaw and uh, my boys were riding bikes and I was enjoying that and I had an old road bike that I'd 
from when I was younger. And I was gonna sell it, I was gonna clean it up and sell it. And so I cleaned it up and oiled it up and then I went for a ride on it and I went, oh, this is so nice. And so I never looked back after that. Did a little bit of racing locally with the, uh, you know, the club there and then with the Saskatchewan Cycling Association. And then I wondered about there being a national team and so forth. So I ended up phoning uh, Eric van den Einde, who still is the national paracycling coach. And I said to Eric, the one disadvantage I have is my age. And he said, I don't know, there's nothing wrong with your age. It's all about speed. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with age. It's all about speed. And I said, okay, he's the coach for me. I did spend a lot of my time working with um, the Paralympic movement. I was invited to many, many, many places around the world to do demonstration, but also to do documentaries and all kinds of other things on, on sport for the disabled. So it was awareness raising, an awful lot of awareness raising. You know, many others have done, Rick Hansen's done a, an incredible job. He did his Man in Motion tour. Terry Fox, I knew Terry a little bit, um, you know, before he died. And here's another amazing person who did an awful lot to raise awareness, to shape people's attitudes, sometimes to change, but also just to, to shape and stuff like that and to help others through whatever they're going through. You know, the impetus behind the creation of the Paralympic movement and the Paralympic Games was that activity is something that is valuable and anybody and everybody should be, can be doing something, right? You can be doing some kind of activity. Standing next to me is one of Canada's finest para-alpine skiers in the country, Kurt Oatway. And you were at the 2014 Paralympics in Sochi, and you just got back to our beautiful country with even more medal. Uh, yeah, I uh, just came back from the start of the 2015-16 World Cup, or IPC World Cup uh, series. Mm -hmm and uh, came back with a gold in Giant Slalom and a, two golds in Downhill. Amazing, amazing. So I mean, how did you get your start in para-alpine skiing? 2010, uh, after I graduated uh, university, I uh, had broken my back previously in 2007 and uh, after I finished my degree, I was put in touch with the Saskatchewan CADS organization uh, based out of Regina and they took me out to Mission Ridge to a fundraiser that was going on that was being hosted actually by SASTEL. They showed me this is what sit skiing is, this is uh, what you can do, and they were putting together a team for the 2011 Canada Winter Games. And I started sit skiing the following week at Mission Ridge, and the coach came up to me and was just like, you have to ski for us. I started training with them in 2011. I was uh, at the Canada Winter Games representing Saskatchewan. Three years after that, I was in Sochi. Now, there might be, Kurt, some kids at home who uh, might feel limited in what they can do. Do you have any advice for them? If you're at home, if you have either born with a disability or you're injured in an accident of some sort and you think, my life is over, well, it's not. It's, uh, you're only limited by what you limit yourself from doing. If you think you want to do it and you want to do it, then chances are you can. 1.24.19, the time of Duek Oatway. Can he get inside it? No, he can't, but he can go second. 1.27, it's Canada 1.23. Yeah. So how are you doing today? Pretty good. Yeah? yeah. Feeling okay and everything? And My first memories of being really active was recess time and let's run out and play soccer. And that, that was for me, you know, the, the highlight it was recess. All right, there's Marie. Woohoo! I'm excited. She's excited. So today we'll go out probably around a little bit around the house, and then we'll head. We'll get warmed up going down the the road, 
And then we'll go towards that uh, forestry, the second entrance in. Well, I enjoyed all sorts of sports in Porcupine Plain, and I was active all the time. And then when we got into high school, I played all the sports that were available, including junior football with the boys. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting, putting on the equipment. And cross-country running, I seemed to excel at it because, you know, it was something you did on your own. And we all trained together in Porcupine Plain. We trained with the football team, and we trained with runners. And, you know, it was awesome. You got to do everything thing and three times a day you, you trained and you didn't know you're training you're having fun right. led by Musqua I enjoyed the distance running like into the forest and um, the evolution after the accident was doing uh, wheelchair racing and the wheelchair racing chair is quite different from this chair <laughs> and you can go very fast and I, I was really you know very grateful for the people in my life when I uh, had the car accident a phys ed teacher contacted Barbara Dorsey from the University of Saskatchewan and Pat Lawson and that um, was you know the beginning of getting back into competition. The forest, yay! <laughs> it's beautiful today. I, the first time I tried skiing, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Um, we got back to where, you know, there was no pavement and you're out in nature, and, um, and that's why I think I love cross-country skiing now. Peter Erickson said to me, when I was wheelchair racing, he said, nothing is for free. Anything that you do, you have to put some effort into it. And, and that's what sport is, right? It's, it's like um, you put some effort into it and you get so much more back. You just want to get up the hill, right? It's just about getting up the hill. Good job. Well, you know, I would definitely see attitude as everything. You know, there are so many things that you can do. There are so many sports that are available. Uh, I just actually was in Regina and I said try this to this young man I said try them try them all do the rowing with the Regina Rowing Club they want you right like um, there's a lot of para sports there's hand cycling there's wheelchair racing there's sledge hockey there's mountain boarding there's so many things that you can do quick hands quick hands quick hands quick hands quick hands good job we just have a riot like we just we go out and we set goals and initially it was just to get up a little hill you know and we had this happy dance on top of the hill really it was it was hilarious here we are out in the forest cheering right because <laughs> Marie got up and it was a crawl up and then I got behind Crystal to make sure she didn't go backwards now we ski to the end of the fence line and they're going 8 to 10k now we did our happy dance here too how many times have we made it out here girls Four or five. Yeah, about four or five times. So together, you know, we're all setting goals, but every single person out there can do that. And and that's, you know, whatever sport they choose, um, set some goals and, you know, and, and gradually get to where you want to be. But most of all, if you're having fun, sport is just amazing. Sport changes life, right? Autumn, I gotta say, this brand new exhibit at the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame, Exceptionally Able, is amazing. Filled with athletes who have overcome insurmountable odds to be exceptional at what they do. And this exhibit is, is no exception. Uh, blind athletes, you have a couple of examples here. Yes, we do. Actually, two out of the nine of our Exceptionally Abled athletes are sight impaired. So that's David Wall and Phil Lederhaus. Uh, just amazing. Imagine if you would, if you're at home, close your eyes, you're on some skis, and someone gives you a gentle push, eyes closed, and you go down a steep slope, a harrowing experience for most of us, nightmares. But Joshua, our good buddy Joshua, in our next story, wouldn't give up that sensation for the world.
The way that we discovered Joshua had a challenge is actually he was born extremely premature. They call it a micro preemie. He was born at 23 weeks gestation. The doctors basically said he had a 1% chance of surviving. So uh, we knew we were in an uphill battle. Uh, he had lots of issues with brain bleeds and eye surgeries and... Gradually, he overcame everything else but the vision and we've been able to, um, you know, have only that and that seems like nothing to us now after what we went through, so. I can see shapes and colors. And I can see if it's bright enough. We were in music therapy and he was about three years old and the lady said to me, the therapist said, well it's really good that he has such an interest in music because he'll probably never play sports. And I looked at her and I said, challenge on. <laughs> and ever since then, I just say, you know what, you can do anything you want. All you have to do is try. Uh, when Joshua wants to do something new and dangerous, uh, such as a couple years ago, he said, mom, my friends are bike ramping and I'd like to try that. Um, I kind of took a nice deep breath in and I said, yeah, you can, you can try it. <laughs> Six years ago, we bought a, a quad from them, a little gas powered. The uh, CNIB thought, that was a little strange. I said, well, what's the worst? He's gonna run into the power pole in the middle of the yard. So we will set the quad low, the basic walking speed, and over the years, he's actually quite good at it because he's been doing it for six years. I just went around the loop. If there was no snow there, there would actually be, there would be gravel there, and I'd go on it every time I go biking or quadding. Joshua, He's, uh, you know, getting older. He wants to uh, drive a truck. And so that may be one thing where he'll figure out eventually that, you know what, that isn't gonna work for me because you, you can't see past the end of the hood to find out if you're running into anything. But again, as a parent, you just have to let them work through the issues one at a time. Tell me about skiing. What inspired you to try skiing? Some of my other friends at school were doing it. Was it hard? It was at the start. Yeah. And it got easier. Joshua's sport is downhill skiing. Uh, just like our able-bodied team members, they race down through a series of gates, and he basically has to follow a guide through the course. I'm Joshua's guide, so I, uh, I'll ski in front of him with a, I've got a microphone and a uh, speaker on the back, and I tell him left, right, and he follows me mostly by, uh, by sound. The first time we were out, he was still pretty shy, just kind of getting to know me. Now we kind of we know each other a little bit better, he trusts me a little bit more. I'm putting his faith that I'm going to not lead him into the trees, so. Honestly, when he wanted to get into skiing, I thought, this is just great, it's amazing. When Gord mentioned Paralympics, I was like, Really? <laughs> that had never even crossed my mind. And ever since that time, um, Joshua has had it in his head now too that he would like to go there. If he wants to go all the way to the Paralympics, I'm behind him 100% and I will help him get there. People with challenges, uh, I possibly recommend for sports and any activity. It really helps their emotional growth and uh, that's good for developing into society because the ultimate goal is when it comes time he's got to be employable he has to get out there earn a living just like everybody else and move forward and by getting involved in sports it's a good social tool and that's a good building block for when they get older Thanks once again for letting us be here today and share in the accomplishments of these amazing athletes. But that's what the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame is all about. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's our 50th year, so it's definitely what it's all about. Come down and see us anytime. We're open Monday to Friday, 10 to 4.30, and Saturdays, 12 to 5. And you know what? If you're looking for inspiration, maybe you've got that gym membership you're not using yet, this is the place to be. Thanks once again, and thank you for joining us on another edition of Max Magazine. I met Arnold Bolt when I was a runner in Brandon, Manitoba, and I remember all these athletes running to the end of the track. You gotta go see this guy with one leg. And I'm like, really? And so 
I watched him and I'll never forget that. It was like hop, hop, hop over and he won the competition. Little did I know in 1992, I would meet uh, Arnold again in Barcelona. And this time I would be sitting and I'd be looking up at the guy that was so amazing to me. So it was such an honor, you know, to be at that Paralympics with him. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com.